In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the module settings within .NET Nuke 7. Now, in order to access those module settings, you need to be logged in with someone with edit permissions on a .NET Nuke website. Typically, that's going to be done through an administrator or a host account, but you can use other accounts as well, depending on the permissions defined on the website. Now, in order to access the module settings, we do need to be on a specific page and be in edit mode on a page. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the control panel and click on the edit this page button. Now, as soon as we do that, we see on the page where the various modules are that are providing content and functionality on that page. We can see those designated by the three black icons, the pencil, the gear, and the arrows that show us where we can move modules, which we've covered in a previous video. Now, in order to access the module settings, we want to go ahead and just pick one of the modules. I'm going to go ahead and choose the module here in the middle of the page that says Welcome to Awesome Cycles. The module settings are found under that gear icon. If we go ahead and click on the settings link that appears. Now, all modules have module settings. Most modules have very similar settings across the board. And I'm going to take you through the tabbed interface here on the module settings page. Now you'll notice that there are four tabs across the top in this particular module. We have a tab called Module Settings, a tab called Permissions, and a tab called Page Settings. After that, we have a tab called HTML Module Settings. Now those are module settings specific to the type of module that we happen to be working with. Not all modules have specific settings, so you may only have these first three tabs available to you. Now from the module settings tab, we find a section called basic settings. Now within here, you can find a couple of different settings available to you. The two that are important are the module label here that says HTML Pro. And if you'll notice, that's actually disabled. It means I'm not allowed to edit that. It just tells me what type of module I'm working with. This happens to be the HTML Pro module. After that, we have the module title. Here we get to define the title of the module. Now, depending on what container we're using on this module, the title may or may not be visible on the page. We'll see that the container setting as we get into the page settings tab up above. Now, within, within each of these labels, you'll notice that there is a information icon to the right of the label. If you go ahead and click on that or mouse over that, what you'll see is you get a little window that pops up that provides you a little bit more information about the label. It gives you a better description of the various settings. After the basic settings section, I'm going to go ahead and collapse that and we can take a look at the advanced settings area. Now the advanced settings area allows us to display this module on all pages. That will do just that. If you check that box, it will place this module and this module content on every page of our website. It's something you need to be careful with because it does affect every page of your website if you do use that setting. After that, we have a shareable option. This is available within both the .NET New Professional and Community Editions. But it's only really effective in the professional edition as you can share different modules across .NET Nuke portals or websites. That's where the shareable option is. You're deciding if that module is shareable or not. The view only option is affected by that shareable option, which basically means you can share the module across all sites or additional sites, but only share the view ability, not allow people on other sites or other administrators to edit the content for that module. After that, we have a hide admin border option. If you have any modules that are displayed on a page that are visible to only administrators, you can turn off the notification that tells you when a module is only visible to administrators. We have a header and a footer section after that that allows us to place content before or after the content of our module. It's not very common that you would utilize these, but if you need to wrap the content of your module in a specific element, such as a div tag, you can do so with the header and the footer setting. After that, we have a start date and an end date option. Here we can define when a module is visible on a .NET Nuke web page and when it goes away. So we can set a, a start time and an end time. If we go ahead and collapse the advanced settings section, the final section here under module settings tab is the added to pages option. Now this will tell us if this module has been copied to any other pages. It would list off those pages and provide us a link to each of those pages. 
From there, we have our permissions grid within the .NET Professional Edition. Under permissions, you'll see that we have a number of different columns available to us. If you're using the Community Edition, you would have two columns available, View and Edit. Within the Professional Edition, we can target more granular permissions. I'd encourage you to check out some of the permissions videos in the .NET video library for discussion around that granularity. But basically, within the permissions grid, we can control who can view the module or who can go through and edit, delete, export, or import. We can control who has those permissions based on the security roles, which we find listed in the rows on the permissions grid. Now you'll notice that the view option is actually locked on all of these rows. That's because the module settings permissions by default are inheriting view permissions from the page. That's the checkbox down below. That means anyone that can view the page can view this module. If you need to override those settings, you can do so by unchecking that checkbox and then you would have access to the view permissions column. On the page settings tab within the module settings, we find a basic settings section, which allows us to define a couple of settings for our module. We have an icon option, we have an alignment, we have a color, a border, and then a collapse or expand option. Now typically the icon option is the only one utilized within most .NET Nuke websites nowadays in the later versions of DNN. You can basically associate an icon with a module and if the container that that module is using supports it, it will display that icon on the page. It's not all that common, but it is still usable within .NET Nuke 7. Now the alignment, the color, and the border settings are available to you if you really need to get in and customize the alignment or the color, the background, or the border of your module. But typically that information is controlled by the module's container, which is a setting we'll find down below. So if we go ahead and scroll down, we do have two options here that are really going to be important to you as a, a content or a, a site administrator. The display container option and the module container option are the two most utilized settings here within this basic settings section on the page settings tab. Display container decides whether the module should have a container that displays when the content is displayed on the page. After that, we have the module container option, which defines which container is being applied to that module. You can see right now in this module that we selected, the container that's in use is called gravity-no title. And it says host right there, that tells us it's a host container, meaning it's available to all modules and all websites within a .NET Nuke installation. In that drop-down list, we'll find that there are a variety of different containers available to us. I would encourage you to check out some of the various containers that are installed on your .NUC website. You can use the preview link there in order to preview what those containers would look like. After the basic settings section, we do have a cache settings area in which you can control some of the cache options for our module. So if you want to allow the module to utilize caching for performance reasons, you can choose whether it should use file, memory, or database caching. You can actually even turn caching off. It's not very common that you would need to adjust those settings. And then finally, under the advanced settings section, we have an option here to set as the default settings and apply to all modules. Now, what this allows you to do is we can take all of the settings that we defined in basic settings and cache settings, and we can apply those settings to every module that gets added to our .NET Nuke website. That's where the set as default settings comes into play. The apply to all modules checkbox allows us to take all of those settings in the the two previous sections and apply them to every module on our website that's already there. Both of these settings are very powerful. They're not very common that you're actually going to utilize them on a regular basis. And finally, the last setting within advanced settings is move to page. This allows you to change where the module is. If we want to move this module from the home page to a different page on our website, we can choose which page we would like that module to move to. And then when we click update down below, the module will be relocated. Now, finally, we do have an HTML module settings tab. We're not going to go into the specifics of the HTML module settings within this particular video, but check out some of the other, other videos within the .NET Nuke video library. 
Now finally, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the page and click Update to save all of our .NET Nuke module settings for that Welcome to Awesome Cycles module. And we can go through every module on our .NET Nuke website and customize the settings.